Welcome friends to another r slash pro revenge video. Today we've got a lot of great stories of revenge and our first story of the day is from Gnarly Felix, paid for 12 days. Back in December 2020, a ton of people at my job called out with COVID. I was one of very few who showed up to work and busted my butt with absolutely no appreciation at all. A common theme for that organization, which I can say I no longer work for, I ended up getting into it with one of my managers that day before I left for my paid Christmas vacation. Around Christmas Eve, I felt I was starting to lose my sense of smell and eventually lost my taste shortly after. Anyway, I was scheduled to go back to work on the 4th of January 2021, but waited till the 3rd to go get tested, tested positive, and they ended up paying me for an extra 12 days off to recover from COVID, at which time I felt absolutely fine. Sorry not sorry. With the way the world was and how businesses were running at the time of COVID going on, do you think it's absolutely shameful that a company like this would not recognize OP's work at all? Or are you a little bit more sympathetic considering the time? I'd like to know what you guys think in the comments down below. Our next story is from Mazzy31. Call the police on my kid for watching a movie? No afternoon nap for you. So I just read a story on here that reminded me of my dad's personal petty revenge story. I was around 10 to 12 when this happened. Our old next door neighbor was a nosy, lazy, stay at home mother. She liked to complain about almost everything. My sister, five years older, had friends ranging from the same age to a few years older, and they would often come to our house for most of every weekend. Sometimes it'd be a couple of friends, others up to 15 or so. The neighbor surprisingly never complained about a bunch of teenagers being at our house every weekend. Until she decided to, I guess. They never made a lot of noise. My dad worked weekends and the number one rule was to not keep dad awake or wake him up. This was during school holidays in summer, so my dad had the following day off. My sister had three friends over, and that night, all they did was watch a movie. It wasn't loud, dad couldn't hear it from our veranda. They didn't even stay late. They went home at about 9.30. Come just after 10 p.m., two cops rock up on our doorstep. A noise complaint from our next door neighbor about a wild party. They were obviously confused as they were greeted by a grumpy late 30s guy in a dressing gown. Book in one hand, smoke in the other, cup of tea on the table in front of him, just chilling on his veranda, instead of the rager they'd been told about. Dad was like, look, I hate the kids coming here, but tonight, three kids were here watching a movie. They left over half an hour ago. I don't know what the freak she's on about. He was pissed. He didn't enjoy our house being the designated hangout place, but as mom always said, at least we know where our daughter is. But even that night, he wasn't annoyed because it was a small group watching a movie. If it was any other night, he'd be annoyed because he'd just come over and tell them they were being too loud. But don't call the cops because they're watching a movie. Our neighbor would always have afternoon naps at 1 p.m. Her bedroom was five meters from our driveway, so pretty close. Our front yard was also huge. Our house was pretty small and sat over a quarter acre. Two thirds of that quarter acre was our front yard. Well, next day the lawn needed mowing. It being summer, our summer temps go into the 40s in Celsius. Dad would normally mow as early as possible in the most efficient way possible. It would normally take him 40 minutes. Not that day. He waited until 12.45 and then he started the mower and did it in the most convoluted way possible two hours of mowing. Then, being the reasonable camper that he is, he decided that it was time to count the tent pegs. They're kept in a metal army box. There's about 300 pegs in there because why not apparently. So out to the driveway right next to her bedroom window. One peg at a time, he took it out, stood up and threw it full force at the driveway. Bang, clang, clash. You get the picture. Then one at a time, he picked them up off the driveway, stood up, threw them full force into the metal box. Bang, clang, clash. She came out to scowl at him a couple of times, but didn't say a word. He was extra cranky that night due to the probable heat stroke, but he always had such glee when recounting this story. I love hearing stories of this because I think if you're gonna be a crap neighbor and you put yourself out there exposing yourself as a crap neighbor, you better be expecting some retaliation. The ones that roll their sleeves up and give them that revenge? I absolutely love hearing about those stories. Our next story is from ACO223. 
lacking social etiquette. I frequently need to use the riding shopping carts due to health issues. Today, I was at the store and smelling different candles to decide what I wanted. A woman kept reaching over me because I'm sitting in the ride-on cart to sneak the same candles I just put down. She reached over me so many times that I got sick of her being in my personal space, plus it being over my head due to a mobility aid. I smelled a candle and then passed it back to her. She acted like I was crazy. I told her, well, you keep reaching to smell everything I've smelled, so I figured you would want this one. She stepped back and waited until I left the aisle to continue her candle smelling. This is just weird in general. I wouldn't feel personally very comfortable just being right next to somebody in an aisle looking at stuff, let alone having the boldness to reach over them while they're sitting on the ride on cart. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, this is just some pretty bold behavior. Our next story is from Unlucky Grab 8908 Won't honor your warranty? Then I'll tell the story on the biggest morning radio show in the state. This happened a number of years ago. We had a good friend pass in a bad motorcycle accident on his way home from work. His wife was watching our son a few days a week while my wife worked. My family, mom and dad, opened their home to his family from out of town while they were all trying to take care of all of the details involved with someone's sudden passing. Well, it was getting close to winter in a northern state and his wife's car needed to have the snow tires put on. My wife asked if I would get it taken care of so she didn't even need to think about it. Absolutely anything to help. I got a hold of her keys, headed to the house, found the tires and set them out to start changing them. At this point, I noticed that one of the tires had a very large balloon protruding from the sidewall. I looked for and found the paperwork. Always keep that stuff with the car very helpful. The tires were less than a year old. So I took the paperwork and the tire down to the shop where the purchase was made. Now it's important to know two things. One, this tire shop is very well known with numerous shops throughout the entire state. And two, the accident happened at the intersection where the shop is located. It was so bad that the shop was closed for the duration of the on-site investigation, a couple of hours, because no one could get in or out of the shop parking area. So it literally happened in their front yard. It also made the local news two days in a row. It was a bad one. So I, my wife and sister, I forget why I stopped to get them, go in to have them simply replace the one tire as it was absolutely unsafe to use. I asked for the manager, which had been the manager for many years. I know this because my family and most of my friends and acquaintances used the shop so much that I asked for the manager by name. I explained why I was there, whom I was there for, showed the paperwork and asked them to take care of it. I even mentioned that I'll pay for any fee. The tires were definitely under warranty and this was definitely a defective tire. His response made my blood instantly boil. He said, there is nothing I will do. Yes, he said, will. You are not him and it's too bad he died, but his is the only name on the paperwork and only he can claim the warranty. I glared at him, asked through clenched teeth if he was serious, and is that really the kind of person he wanted to be, as this man died outside his shop less than a week ago. Again, his response, company policy, not my problem. You can buy one if you like. I was so angry and disgusted I could barely see straight. So I looked him square in the eyes, took the paperwork from the counter and said, okay, you will regret this as I have a very big mouth and will tell everyone I know. And that's exactly what I did. First I took the tire and paperwork and drove quite literally across town 30 minutes to a different shop. This shop is used by the company I worked for at the time for all their fleet needs but mostly tires. I walked in and just happened to get the owner, asked if he was aware of the accident. He said he was and how horrible it must be for his family. So I then explained what I was doing, just trying to replace this defective tire. He didn't sell the particular brand and I told him I was more than willing to purchase even two new tires to keep things balanced from him if he could help out. He said, sure, but I'll have to ship them in from the other store. It'll take just a day or two. Great. See you then. Three days later, it was a Tuesday. I get a call from the new shop that the tires were in. He said, bring the car down and we'll take care of everything, balance and install. Awesome. I'll be there after work. I headed down there and he ordered four new tires, mounted, balanced and installed them, but they did everything at no charge. The owner's response was, 
I just want to help her. I don't want her to have to be worried about something as stupid as a tire. And your payment is please tell your friends about us. I won't lie, that made me choked up a bit. This man had no clue who I was, who my friend was, but he chose to help a person in need by replacing a product that wasn't even his. It was awesome. The next thing I did was tell everyone, and I mean everyone. The next day, Wednesday, I called our local radio station morning show. The show was very well known and broadcast over half of the state and parts of three others bordering us, and I told the whole story about the refusal of this well-established local shop and also the awesomeness of the new guy. At first, I simply told the hosts of the show off air. The only reason I think they even listened was I had done some work for one of the guys like the month before, but after they heard the story, they told it on air. There was only one name they used in their discussion, that of the new tire shop, and a unique description of the bad guy. It was amazing. If you had heard or seen the news, you knew about the accident and where it happened and could discern who the bad guy was. It was shortly after that a buddy whose company used bad guys shop for their vehicles told me that the manager was no longer there and a friend of his who worked at a different location had heard that he was let go for fraudulence. Apparently he would make up company policy as he saw fit and because of the broadcast, there was some clarification of managerial power within that company. It turned out to be quite an embarrassing situation for that company as a whole. I never expected anything to really come of my self-imposed righteous indignation, but it was glorious the way things played out. I told everyone I could to go to the new guy for years, right up until I moved out of that state. But as you can see, I'm still telling everyone who's willing to listen or read as the case may be. I guess the moral of my story is, when you have a chance to do something good, Something to help anyone in distress, whether we know them or not, take it. Do what you can, even if it's a small thing. At the very least, you'll feel good knowing you did a good thing. So apparently the name of the place is Lysix Tire in Montana, or Lysix, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. But honestly, what an unbelievably generous action from that company. All I know is, if a company had the kind of heart to do something like that for me, they would definitely make me at least a lifetime advocate of using that company. It's definitely the kind of action that can get you kind of choked up a little bit. By the way, if you're enjoying these stories, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below so you never miss any of my daily videos. Our next story is from Trya Jace, but old driver doesn't get to use their driver door every morning. My first apartment had interestingly awful streets. Weird stop signs, out of place one ways lined with parallel parking, and blind curves and intersections everywhere. This complex also had one neighbor in either my building or the building next to mine that didn't drive cautiously, blew through stop signs, took their luck on the blind intersections, didn't heed the one way signs and would sit there waiting for the correct drivers to move. They also drove a very distinctive blue Hyundai SUV and parked it over the line usually in one particular spot every day. Lucky for me, I worked at a dealership as a lot attendant for around two years and drove better backwards than forwards. I also had collapsible mirrors, a hatchback, and an overnight job that got me home just before they left for work, but also after everyone else left. So I would back in as close to their driver door as I could while still being in the lines, Mirror collapsed, not minding if someone, their significant other, tried the same thing to me on the other side because I'll get out through the trunk. I know everyone in the complex that had a bone to pick with them was happy with that, and thankfully we only got retaliation once when they put a trash bag on our car. But we ripped it, moving it back onto theirs where they accidentally had their sunroof open. My husband, boyfriend at the time, or I, usually had an errand to run before noon, so we'd be parked normally and kindly by the time parking started filling back up. No, they never learned, and sadly we moved a few months after, so their punishment was short-lived. Also, no, I don't feel bad. They almost ran over kids multiple times that I saw, and the leasing office wouldn't do anything. I mean, it just sucks that there's not much you can do about somebody like this. Like, maybe you would think that it could get possibly bad enough to try to report them to some kind of authority, but let's be real, they would not care unless something or god forbid someone was actually hit. 
This dude going into intersections blind is like bound to cause some kind of horrendous accident and there's nothing you can even really do, even if you want to try to put a stop to it. This next story is from Super Finish. Hit me with hidden service fees? That's okay with me. I was put in charge of ordering a nice catered dinner for a large group of people, like 200 plus people total. I chose a caterer who was very responsive and nice until I placed an order. The way it works is that I first place an order to their kitchen and then I have like 3 days to pay up the balance once the restaurant sends me the bill. After I placed the order, the owner of the business basically ghosted me even though I hadn't paid at that point and I also didn't get any bills on how much the total was going to be until 2 days before the event. The owner, let's call him Bob, basically didn't return my calls or texts even though my company wouldn't let me pay until I had an actual itemized bill. A week of not answering my calls pass and Bob eventually sends me the bill. I was kind of livid to find out that he charged me for every single thing. I was billed for paper plates, utensils, napkins, cups, sugar packets, condiments, you name it. On top of it, he had charged a 6% service fee which was never mentioned even though I told him exactly what my budget was and he knew that it would be way over the budget if the 6% were added on. It was a big order so even the 6% was a lot. I should add that my company has an agreement with his business that these small things are never supposed to be charged and we're supposed to get free delivery since our orders are very large. When I confronted him about it, he basically said that he's not doing the free anything anymore because the pandemic hit his business hard. I was so close to just finding another restaurant but the dinner was in two days and I didn't think anyone else would take a last minute order. So I just talked to the accounting department hoping to beg for the extra money, but our amazing accountant had a simple solution. They'll just tip them 10% for the delivery and we can still stay under the budget and buy the utensils with the leftover money. So although my initial budget was created with a 20% tip in mind, Bob only ended up getting 16% extra. 6% service charge and 10% tips, and the remaining 4% was more than enough to cover for the utensils, and we still had some change, in the hundreds, left over for our next event. And of course, we're never using Bob's restaurant again. I mean, hey, run your restaurant how you want to run your restaurant, but if you're going to try to make every possible item an upsellable thing, to the point where you're charging them for utensils and sugar packets, like, good for you, I guess that's your right to do so, but you probably should tamper your expectations if you're hoping for any return business. This next story is from an anonymous poster, Phone Mistile Leads to Years of Torment. Not much of an interesting story, but wanted to share. I had a missed call on my phone once about 4 years ago and I had been waiting on a call from Southern Connecticut about a fence install. Thinking it may have been them, I called back and some woman answered when I said, Hi, I just missed a call from you, I didn't know if it was a wrong number or someone I knew. This lovely Karen in the making said, If I didn't leave you a message, then obviously it wasn't for you. I said, Well, okay, I had a missed call so I had to check. To which she replied, Are you done? Don't you have anything better to do than play games on people's phones? To which I hung up. What this delightful peach of a woman didn't know was that I worked straight nights, four on, four off, at a paper mill at the time, still do, so for literal years I would dial her number at random times of the night, 2am, 4am, etc, and as soon as she answered, I'd hang up. It wasn't much, but it made me crack up. I kept it up for years until one day the number was disconnected. Probably would still be doing it today. Thanks for reading. I mean, it's definitely revenge. You're definitely giving it right back to them. But I'm kind of wondering, I feel like at a certain point there would legitimately be a harassment charge here. Like, assuming both parties took place in some kind of US state, even if it crossed like state lines. OP was probably putting themselves in a legal issue, although I guess pre-Karen didn't really care. Our next story is from San and Tears 1, don't eat my dog food, an oldie but a goodie. We had a short term roommate, a couple, staying with us for a few months. I have many stories about the crazy things they did. At the time, I was cooking my dog's food due to health issues. I'd prep her food at the beginning of the week and then put them in my fridge. 
All of my roommates knew that these sandwich bags in the fridge were my dog food. One day I came home and my last three bags are gone. Like, I didn't misplace them. They were there this morning. Gone. I had to make an emergency grocery run and everybody denied eating it. So rather than fighting with this couple about it, I waited until they were in the kitchen at the same time. I started my dog food prep and I started talking about my dog's genius pill avoidance. I told the girl that I had to crush up her medications and I added them to the baggies every week. I proceeded to name all the side effects for people taking these medications, emphasizing the ones I knew her boyfriend was experiencing due to other conditions at the time. As far as liability, I was 100% in the clear. For one thing, I didn't actually add medications to the food. But beyond that, the food was clearly identified as dog food to everybody in the house. And I never invited anybody to eat it. Let's just say that this girl has no poker face, and my dog food never went missing again. Honestly, that's a great method of making them totally cringe up and recoil. I don't know what OP is giving their dog, but if it's good enough for somebody to steal out of the fridge and eat out of a sandwich bag, OP must have been making some real gourmet stuff. This next story is from Mikey Bonbon 1988 My crazy Karen neighbor done fed up. So I posted several stories about my nut job neighbor Karen. I called my girlfriend today, currently on a cross country motorcycle trip. Oh boy, huge update. Karen had a court hearing on Thursday. My girl, being the nosy bee, looked up the court docket, and she went, Gotta love the open court system. Karen got herself an actual factual lawyer and pushed for at-home holding. Basically an ankle monitor and she can't leave the house. The Crown thought that was a bad idea and pushed to be held in jail. Karen poses a significant risk to others and herself. With all my security footage and the other evidence, the Crown has a strong case. Over the last two years, keep in mind I've only lived at my new house for three weeks, she called the police over 800 times. Karen was denied any bail. She has over a dozen charges including assault with a deadly weapon. CJ's arm is healing up nicely but there wasn't much damage to his ink. In a few months he'll need some minor touch-ups when the stitches have to come out. But Karen is facing up to seven years in prison. And even worse, there's a good possibility she could be held in a medical facility for an indefinite amount of time. And in cases like that, if she gets sentenced and it's determined she's not sound of mind, if she receives any sentence and is sent to a medical facility, they can hold her past the sentenced amount of time until it's deemed she poses no threat to the community. So yeah, Karen's locked up and it seems like my problems are over. So if I recall correctly, this Karen started out as one of those Karens that watches you, hawks over their neighbors, calls the cops on any slight inconvenience or nuisance call they can make, and at one point OP and their big biker friends all wore skimpy clothing and danced to Barbie girl, even got Karen's son to join in, and I guess the Karen flipped out and I think ended up cutting one of the guy's arms with some kind of like clipper or something. So I think it's pretty safe to assume that this Karen is probably going to get some amount of time. Our next story is from Not a Robot, Deaf a Cyborg. Try to scam my kid into having teeth pulled? I'll take him to a real dentist. This story is only kind of petty because the whole thing maybe could have been avoided. Anyhow, on with it. About four or so years ago, I took my oldest to the franchise dentist that rhymes with Raspin. His regular dentist had retired, and he was no longer on his dad's insurance. And no dentists in our city except Medicaid. He's disabled. This is a young man who, overall, takes excellent care of his teeth, but still has some little bits of buildup here and there. Of course, it discolors, so he was freaking out thinking his teeth were going to fall out. Took him to Raspin, and they flippin' terrorized him. Had him almost convinced that he needed over a grand in dental work and would have to have several teeth extracted right away. He came out of the exam room angry, pale, and shaking, and I was seething. I thanked them for their time, and we left. We went to my home, he doesn't live with me, went through the insurance provider's website, and promptly found him with an appointment with a new dentist who had a great reputation. Which is what we should have done in the first place, but... Hindsight is 2020. 
The other dentist took one look at the x-rays and said to my son, What exactly were they telling you that they had to do? So my son explained that he was told he would need no fewer than three fillings and possibly up to five teeth pulled because they were rotting out of his head. He told me after his appointment that the doctor swore under his breath for a good minute upon hearing that. Turns out, not only did he absolutely not have any teeth that were in poor condition, he had a genetic condition of his teeth that results in something called supernumerary roots. When the x-rays were taken, it showed shadows that could, if you didn't know what you were looking at, be mistaken for tooth decay. Total cost at Raspin? Zero dollars because first exams are at no cost to the patient. Total cost at Good Dentist? Fifty-seven dollars because good dentists are worth it. Scam avoided, and my boy still has all his beautiful, healthy teeth. Honestly, even if you haven't been taking the greatest care of your teeth, unless you know there's a real issue, if somebody says, oh, we have to pull, I would say get a second opinion regardless. I mean, don't even play around with the idea of losing a teeth without fully knowing that for sure you need to lose that tooth. And our final story of the day is from Hugh Gazole, Sweet Double Revenge. So, I have this couple across the street who are complete jerks. They act like your friend, but they'll stab you in the back every chance they get. So I was having a 10th birthday party for my son and his schoolmates. It was in the middle of summer, so we had a barbecue with his friends and their parents and other friends as well. I also had a friend of mine playing music. Nothing fancy, just a guitar and some amps. Not too loud. So around 8.30 in the evening, I see these neighbors of mine coming home. And after a couple of minutes, I can see her through her front window on the telephone. I turn to my friend and I say, I bet you the police will be here within 10 minutes. Sure enough, the police roll up and park out in front of my house and just stand there. I'm half in the bag and I go up to the officers and ask them if there's a problem. One of the officers tells me that there was a noise complaint, so I asked him what time that goes into effect. He replies, 10 o'clock. At this point, it's only 9 p.m., so I thank him and I walk back into my yard and I gather all the kids together. Turns out my buddy, the musician, has all types of instruments available. Maracas, cymbals, tambourines, you name it, he has it. I told every kid to grab one and make as much noise as possible for the next hour. And then at 10 o'clock, we shut it down. The police officers got a kick out of it. Fast forward a couple of weeks, I live in a town with no postal delivery. All residents get a post office box. Just so happens on a Saturday, I'm at the post office and the wife comes in to get her mail. While she's doing this, I notice her P.O. box number. I make a mental note and I head over to the local 7-Eleven where a friend of mine works. I asked him if he would mind if I took a couple of subscription cards out of the magazines that are in them. He tells me to help myself. I proceed to take a subscription card out of every adult magazine that the store sells. Playboy, Hustler, you name it, I got it. I took them home and with a big smile on my face, I filled them all out with the husband's name and then drop them into the mailbox. My only regret was not seeing the look on our face when those magazines started to get delivered. So is this like the old school edition of getting somebody's email and then signing them up for every adult entertainment website or mildly related location? Just going out there, taking these mailers and having it physically mailed to them? Honestly, the funniest thing would be like, imagine the wife and husband go and pick up the stuff from the P.O. box. And there's a moment where one of them has to explain to the other why there's just so many adult magazines just showing up. I have no clue, honestly. I swear. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely crazy revenge story, click on that left video. Or if you missed my latest video, check out the one on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.